going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome to another installment in my Steven Spielberg director series where I'm taking a look at his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent film. And in today's video, I'm taking a look at his 2004 comedy drama, The Terminal. So The Terminal was released in 2004, and this is one of the least remembered Steven Spielberg films. When deciding to undertake this series, The Terminal was one of the rare Steven Spielberg films I had never seen before. Some of the other ones I hadn't seen that I had experienced for the first time. Schindler's List, Amistad, uh, Empire of the Sun, just to name a few, were among the rare Spielberg films I had never seen before and The Terminal is the last of these first time viewings in the Spielberg series. This is a movie that had decent reviews when it came out. It did okay at the box office but it's kind of faded into obscurity a little bit. It's one of the more forgotten Steven Spielberg films. This is a movie Spielberg was inspired to make the Terminal because of a real life incident that happened similarly to the main character in the terminal he also wanted to make a movie that he said he wanted to make another movie that would make audiences laugh cry and feel good about the world once again this movie came out a few years after the world was still grasping 9-11 especially and this is a movie that he wanted to make to get audiences feeling happy and positive and optimistic once again in such a dreary world and that's what's reflected the most in a movie like The Terminal. So, is The Terminal any good? Let's find out together. After arriving at New York's JFK airport, Victor Navorsky gets unwittingly caught in bureaucratic glitches that make it impossible for him to return to his home country of Kirkovska or enter the U.S. Now caught up in the richly complex and amusing world inside the airport, Victor makes friends, gets a job, finds romance, and ultimately discovers America itself. And this movie stars Tom Hanks, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Stanley Tucci, Chi McBride, Zoe Saldana, and Diego Luna. So on the surface, this sounds like a far-fetched story, a foreigner traveling to the U.S. and some loopholes and other glitches and stuff get him stranded in an airport and he's living in an airport. But like I said, this was inspired by a, loosely inspired by a real life story of a man who got stranded and ended up living in an airport for 18 years. So this isn't an implausible story. Spielberg loosely took the story, simplified it, uh, by a lot and made his own version of this story and I actually did really like The Terminal. Uh, considering this isn't one of the best remembered Spielberg films, it's not one of the most beloved or acclaimed Spielberg films, this is one of the more underrated films of Steven Spielberg's career in my opinion. He definitely took a lot of influences from Frank Capra. Frank Capra made a lot of films that were very positive and optimistic very sentimental, very upbeat movies that definitely dive deep into the soul and you and creates inspiring movies out of it. Best known for It's a Wonderful Life, obviously. And you can feel a little bit of that in the terminal. You have a character like Victor, played so well by Tom Hanks, who's trying to get into the US. He's trying to do something for his late father. And but because his home country, his fictional country made up for this film, is caught in a military coup, and since they can't prove you know, his passports and everything because the U.S. is not identifying this country because of the social unrest, he's screwed. He's stranded at this hotel. He can't leave the airport. He can't return home. It's such a weird scenario to be a part of, but... What I love about this movie is Victor's optimism in all this. He just waits it out, 
He just enjoys being in the airport. He's able to find a job, work as a construction worker. He's able to make friends. He's able to eat as much food as he wants. He falls in love with Catherine Zeta-Jones. Like, yeah, I'd want to fall in love with Catherine Zeta-Jones. Have you seen her? She is gorgeous. Like, yeah, I envy you, Tom Hanks. So there's definitely a lot to this movie that just, it just warmed my heart so, so much that even with what's going on right now. Like, this is a movie that helped me forget about daily struggle. That helped me forget about some of the things I might be currently stressed out about. And I just had a great time with this movie. I think Spielberg definitely fulfilled his promise of making you laugh, cry, and to feel good about the world again. He did that with its 2004 viewers who were still grieving over 9-11. And he definitely did it to me, living in 2020, who struggling to grasp with COVID and what's going on with that and some of the social unrest that I think is really tearing everybody apart. The Terminal is just a great movie. It's, just, it's a great human story. This movie is not perfect, though. The movie is very contrived throughout in its narrative. I can see people complain about how goofy this film can be sometimes. There are some slapstick comedy in here. I found it pretty funny. And then I can see people complain about Stanley Tucci's character especially, who's kind of a cartoonish villain character, even though he's the, the head of an airport. And I definitely see where his character is coming from, how he doesn't trust Victor, and how he's willing to do everything <laughs> to try to get rid of this guy. But... I still enjoyed this movie overall. I think this is a very breezable watch. I think the movie tugged at the heartstrings in all the best ways. I loved Tom Hanks in this movie. I thought his accent was very believable. It could have been easily cartoonish because it would be so obvious his accent is not real, but Tom Hanks pulls the character off so well. And it's one of his more criminally overlooked performances, in my opinion. He still does a remarkable job and still gives that charm that you expect from somebody as likable as Tom Hanks. I think this is an underrated Steven Spielberg film with another uplifting John Williams score. The movie looks beautiful throughout. It's crazy that the airport that we see in the film was all a set. Like, I was blown away by that. I thought we were at a real airport throughout the entire film. And it's crazy that was a set. It's one of the most stunning set designs I've ever seen in a film. Overall, uh, the movie does a great job with its cast with Tom Hanks and Catherine Zeta-Jones, Stanley Tucci. It's fun seeing Diego Luna long before he was in Rogue One, Zoe Zaldana. There, it's great seeing these actors add gravitas to an already impressive Steven Spielberg film. And I just love seeing actors in Steven Spielberg films because Steven Spielberg's one of the best in his craft. So if you're in a Steven Spielberg film, you're a good actor in my book. And this movie is no exception with all the actors that are involved. The Terminal is an underrated Steven Spielberg film. More people need to talk about this film. This movie is barely talked about from a lot of film fans. I think especially in 2020, with a lot of hatred, with a lot of division, with a lot of fear, with the pandemic. I think this is a good watch. I think this is a good movie that people can check out, can feel heartwarmed once again by the good of humanity. And just watch a breezy, fun movie that's both funny and uplifting at the same time. It may not be Steven Spielberg's very best movie, but it's still a really good movie that still shows some of the best that Steven Spielberg can do as a director with any project that he's a part of. And while this movie can be contrived, it's still a very entertaining watch that's still warmed my heart. And I'm going to give The Terminal a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting an 82 
out of 100. So that wraps up my review of The Terminal as part of my Steven Spielberg director series where I'm reviewing his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent film. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're a hardcore fan of Steven Spielberg, don't forget to click the link in the description below for a playlist where you can catch up on all the Steven Spielberg reviews I've done on this channel so far. At the time of this video, I reviewed the original three Indiana Jones films, the two Jurassic Park films which he directed. I've also reviewed iconic classics such as Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, E.T., The Color Purple, Hook, Schindler's List, Saving Private Ryan, A.I., Minority Report, Catch Me If You Can, to some of his more obscure films such as 1941, The Sugarland Express, Empire of the Sun, Amistad, and much more. I have more Steven Spielberg reviews to come on this channel, so if you're a hardcore fan of Steven Spielberg and you'd like to catch up on my past videos, don't forget to click the link in the description below where you can see more, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of future videos in this series. Join me next time in my Spielberg series where I'll be taking a look at the 2005 sci-fi film War of the Worlds. I can't wait to talk about that one. I have a lot of great experiences with War of the Worlds and I'm excited to share my thoughts on this film with you guys. So be on the lookout for that review coming very very soon. But if you've seen The Terminal, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!